Kia tato nami hi nui. Um, I'm Sandra Gray and I'm going to just walk you a little bit of a conversation around the Mobilising the New World reports that have come out for the New Zealand Institute of Skills and Technology. Um, I'm the National Secretary of the Union and um, my role here is to, to work with the members on advancing things that really matter to us. Um, so why am I talking to you today about the mobilising the new world and what's the importance of these reports? Um, and why do we need you to take action? Well, I'm going to start with the uh, why first. The why are we interested in engaging in these debates? Um, and this is really because um, we've done some really great, fabulous action over the last few years insisting that the New Zealand Institute of Skills and Technology um, make sure that staff are at the table when it comes to designing the new vocational education system and in an ongoing basis around that system. So we won a major victory by having put into the legislation a charter which says these things, that actually the institution must empower students and staff on academic, non-academic and wellbeing matters and on the matters of operation. Um, of the organisation at, at all levels. So we've won the right to have a say, we've won a place at the table, now we have to actually be inspired and get involved and have our say. Um, I am going to also say that we need the NZIST and all of its subsidiaries um, to make sure we have the time and the energy and the space to engage in these really big debates because that's crucial. So what are the current debates out there? Well, there have been um, seven reports released by the NZIST team um, looking at what the new world, this new vocational education system will look like. These reports were created by 76 people who were involved in a collaborative design process during the establishment phase of NZIST. Um, and there were a whole range of people involved, you know, ITP staff, students, ITO staff, EWI, employers, industry specialists, um, TEU members and TEU staff. So we were there at the table. Um, and together we brought our experience and, and all of our ideas and a whole lot of evidence to the table to say, well, what would this really great new vocational education space look like? And we um, worked in seven teams and seven reports have been launched. So I want to just briefly go over each of the reports because they all have a different flavour um, and we think it's really important that we give you an overview before you start working out how you're going to critique them or what you're going to comment on when it comes to the mobilising the New World reports. So the very first report is called the Learner Journey Mapping. Um, the idea about this is simple. It's that you have to understand your learners you have to understand their needs before you can design anything, be it academic programs, support services, administration, platforms, online platforms. What makes students really, really go ahead and learn and be involved? And what are some of the barriers to engagement? Now, this report we feel has some real merit. There's lots more work to be done, lots more learner journeys to map. But the important thing is that if we're going to do this type of process, then we actually have to use that evidence, those journeys, all that we've learnt to design the rest of the institution. Um, we don't want a case where we put a whole lot of energy into bringing together evidence and then ignoring it. So evidence based, most definitely. The second report is the Employer and Community Journey Report. And this report is one about how do we get, um, you know, employers, industries, communities, iwi hapu involved, um, so that they get out of NZIST and the learners from NZIST what they need um, going forward. Um, now this one, our biggest criticism is probably um, just that there needs to be more solid recommendations on how to do community engagement, but also starting from te tiriti o waitangi. We must start from a treaty relationships base. The next report up is the Education Product and Services um, and the Online Arrangements, two groups that were brought together. Um, and they're looking at um, obviously all of those things we need to do our job in supporting learners on their learner journey. So, you know, what books and library resources do they need? What IT platforms, you know, what sort of things help learners on their way in terms of tools? couple of really big critiques of this piece. Uh, one is it feels very much like we're being driven by technology in places. So we need to think about what decision making is based on. Is it based on the learner journeys and learner needs? Or is it based on a flashy new technology that we've just found? Um, so 
technological determinism. The second is actually all through this report and in others, there's this idea of 24-7 provision. Uh, what does that mean? Do they mean that there really will be staff members awake at two in the morning to answer a query? Or is this about students doing what they've always done, picking up resources in the middle of the night and getting some work done in between those hours where they're caring for families, going to work and going to study? So what is it that they mean by 24-7? The fifth report is the work-based learning report. Um, this report um, kind of drives home really what the minister wanted throughout this process, and that is that we need more people who are in work being able to learn on the job, to, to practice lifelong learning. Um, and you know we all know the transformative power of education, so we're not gonna argue with the idea of getting people into education and training. The question is, what's the right balance between on-campus, on-job and online learning? And what do the learners really, really need there? Um, and how do we get employers on board? The sixth report is the new academic architecture. Um, the academic board, the structure of that has already been decided and people have already been appointed to the New Zealand Institute of Skills and Technology Academic Board nationally. Um, but there is a lot of work to do here. Um, and certainly what we need to do now is work out you know, who decides what program is taught where and why and how. You know, what's the role of those things like the Workforce Development Councils that sit outside NZIST and how will they work with the academic structure of NZIST. The final report I'm actually going to set to one side um, because international education has been changed forever because of COVID-19. We cannot um, we cannot debate this until we have a fundamental debate um, across all of the tertiary education sector about you know what it is we want from international education. What COVID-19 has shown us is it cannot be about revenue. It can't be about paying for our domestic provision of tertiary education through getting a whole lot of international cash cows. So let's debate that in another space. So seven reports for you to think about. What we have is some worksheets that ask some critical questions in a range of places and on a range of topics on the idea of 24-7 operation. What does it mean? On the idea that it seems these reports are saying technology is the answer. What does that mean? Um, the new world being on job. What will that do for current staff working in the subsidiaries of NZIST, the polytechnics? Um, how do we evaluate what are good rules, what are good statutes, what are good policies? We're suggesting um, that the Charter of NZIST might provide the framework for analysing whether we should go ahead with a project or not um, and how we should design things. And finally, all of the reports have very strong statements about the need to um, improve the workforce of NZIST to do lots of professional development and learning across NZIST. We think there's a lot to unpack there and a lot we need to discuss about who should design the PD, who should choose the PD, whether staff have the time to do PD. So we'd like you to think about that. So we hope that this has inspired you to take some action, to get involved, to be empowered to comment on the mobilising the New World reports. You have until the 15th of July to get your voices heard. Um, we fought for it, we asked for it, we're at the table. Let's take this opportunity to have our say on what the New World should look like.